The Deputy National President of National Association of Government Approved Freight Forwarders, NAGAF, Chairman, NAGAF Academy Board of Studies, Chief Simeon Uwonu, speaks on why Nigerians should register for their PVC and as well collect it after registration. I say my name is uh, Simeon Uwonu, the Deputy National President of NAGAF Headquarters. Sir, we want to get your opinion on the collection of PVC because we have the opinion that these days PVC collection does not really matter. Yes, some people believe that it does not matter and it was an old orientation resulting from the way things were being handled during elections. So, but I can tell you that right now there is a lot of changes a lot of improvements in the system, I mean the political system. So the issue of PVC cannot be re, re, uh, overemphasized, cannot be overemphasized. Uh, without the PVC, of course, the person is already disenfranchised. That is self-disenfranchisement when you don't have it. So permanent voters card is a prerequisite that one must have to participate actively during the voting in the general election that is coming up early next year. So the challenges are that the time being wasted during the process of collection and what do you have to say or how do you think these things can better be resolved? Well, like I said before, that old thinking that I go to vote I start about three hours, four hours, at the end of the day, my vote would not count. It's now a, 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 a forgotten term. The system we are operating right now, I mean Nigeria, the, 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 the electionary system, is that of electronic transfer. So there will be a kind of um, fastness, both in terms of voting, in terms of counting the votes, and in terms of transferring votes to the rural centers. And registration, yes, we know the difficulties being encountered by Nigerians to go and register and to collect the PVC itself. But I think there has been a lot of improvement on that now. For instance, if you want to be a member of, uh, if you want to go and register now to get a PVC, you can even use your phone. And I think even INEC has created many centers in every area. So it does not necessarily mean you must go to INEC office to go and register, no. There are some registrations you can do with your phone. There are some that you need to go to a registration center and we have so many such centers in every area. In every world, we have many registration centers. But the fact remains that some people are still reluctant to go and register because of that old mentality that why must I bother myself after all the stress in registration and even after the voting will my vote count? But I'm telling you that that is an old mentality. If you want to be part and parcel of the political process right now, the first thing you have to do is to go and register. And of course, you know, in everything we do in life, time is involved. Time is involved and time is of essence. So in other words, you have to spend time to go there and register. And after the registration, which I know, I think even told us that we can do it online if you follow the process. But because many people don't have the technical knowledge of how to do it online, then you have to spend some time, go to the center within your area of residence and register. And when you register, I can tell you, it will not take time to also get the PVC. So of course, for instance, I am a member of the NNPP, New Nigeria People's Party. I'm a card carry member. I can tell you I was here in Lagos. I, I was here in Lagos when I registered. And I registered online. And my ward, where I know by God's grace I will be there to cast my vote, is in my village. My ward is my village. So when the time comes, of course, by the grace of God, I will travel. I will go there and do my voting. 
Now, what I'm trying to say is that, like I said before, in any MPP, we're encouraging people. Here at Naga, for instance, we ask people, if you don't know how to do the recession, come here. We do it free of charge. We register you in your ward or in your place of residence. You just tell us to register you. Then, we encourage at the back here, at the back of Naga here, we have the recession center authorized by INEC. You go there and register. Do you understand? After registration, you can see transfer. That means that, for instance, after registration, registering yourself here at Apapa, and by whatever is the reason you find yourself somewhere else, you can still transfer that registration from Apapa here to the place where you are then resident. And that's the beauty of technology and the beauty of the new uh, uh, system. That's what I'm saying. So we encourage people. We encourage people. We have now seen that, yes, your vote counts. Every vote counts, unlike in the past. We have an instance of what happened in Anambra State during the last governorship election. It was evident that every vote counted. And that was what made the incumbent governor, Soludo, you know, we saw that he had a clear margin. He won clearly because every vote was counted. You see the number of policemen that were, were, that were deployed to Anambra State. And they ensured that it was free and fair. So every vote counted. When it comes to political and the entire political process, including voting during elections, they tend to believe that the government itself does not show transparency. And for that reason, like I said before, people feel instead of wasting our time, even wasting our money to do this, to do that, why don't I stay away from the process? But that has to change, and that is changing. Now, what we want government to do as a way of encouraging people, as a way of making people to believe that what they are doing is not a waste of time, that going there to register, spending a day to register, spending time to go and collect the, the PVC is never a waste of time. What government should do is to be transparent. What INEC should do is to be transparent. You understand? Once the government is transparent during elections, and INEC is seen to be transparent in the counting and in the entire process, I'm telling you, Nigerians will change. Everybody will like to part and parcel of the voting process. We are not carried along by customs or by the uh, Minister of Finance. So it came to us as a strange introduction. And that was why the freight forwarders put up very stiff resistance to that. And again, when you look at that VIM valuation, my sister, the truth remains that people have to pay through their nose to get a car. And I don't know why in Nigeria, things that work in other places hardly work in Nigeria. But of course, that could be linked to corruption in the system. Now, when you look at the issue of this film valuation, you come to understand that once we begin to implement that, once the customs begins to implement that, it will mean more hardship, both to freight forwarders, to importers, and to everybody. So at the end of the day, the economy suffers it. If you look at the various cameras in Lagos now, you discover that the, nobody is buying. From where do you get the money to buy? If you go to Tinkan, if you go to Tinkan Terminal, if you go to uh, PTML, you see a lot of cars, vehicles that have been there for over one month, two months, three months. Some have been there for even one, over one year, rusting away. Talkless of now that the money for clearance has been hijacked, has been hijacked up again. 
the money has been jacked up again. So I wonder what will be the benefit of this pay valuation to the economy because we're talking about the economy. The economy already is suffering from uh, inflation, hyper inflation is already affecting the economy. And now, they are, by this beam valuation again, we are going to, of course, beef up the inflation again. I don't know. Left to me, I would have said, let this beam valuation be applicable to brand new vehicles imported into Nigeria. So that if you know you can afford it as a rich person, you can go and buy. You can go and buy. You can go and clear. But for used vehicles that the some of these people using it some by using it for taxi in Nigeria there's no employment and most of these uh, unemployed graduates some of them if they could manage to raise some little money they could go and buy a car and use it for taxi some will buy bus and use it for commercial purposes but with this introduction of VIN valuation it means that we are going back to the status quo we are going back to the status quo. Things are getting bad. The economy is worsening by the day. And we're not helping matters. Government is not helping matters. So the issue is not just raising money for government, raising money for government, raising money for government. Money you are raising for the government, who are going to benefit from the money? Is it the dying people? Is it the people that are undergoing starvation? Who are going to benefit? So what? We are saying that VIM valuation, yes, government has introduced it and nobody can stand on the wall of government or say no. They know what they want. But all I'm saying is that we have to give it some human face in the interest of the economy of Nigeria. Thank you. Although the introduction of VIM valuation is a welcome development, but it had further increased the hardship and inflation on Nigerian youths who are unemployed, Joy and Edu, Seabed TV.